guys welcome to a new video here in JS Education my name is Carlos Santana and we are going to start a new course um, where I am going to teach you how to create a monorepo um, so let's start so the, the first thing I want to show you is what's the, the difference between a multi-repo and a monorepo so a multi-repo basically uh, is what we do normally in our projects having for example a back-end project and a front-end so each one on each on its own repository. So for example, each each repository is going to have its own mo node models, source, the index file, and its package, JSON. And also for the front end, node model, source, index, and the package JSON. The monorepo strategy basically is to create one repository and then have a global node model for all the packages that is being shared. And then we have a packages folder and inside we have our projects backend and frontend. And we just have here the index file and the package JSON, but we do not include the node models on each independent project. It's been shared uh, globally. And finally, we have the package JSON that is uh, for the root on the monorepo. There is uh, some, well, there is a lot of advantages of having a monorepo and also there are a few uh, disadvantages. So the main advantage that I can tell is that basically, for example, if you have uh, different libraries that you want to share, for example, let's suppose you have a UI kit or a UI library, right? Um, where you have your bot your buttons, your components for buttons and alerts, etc. So basically you can add a package here um, and you can connect or you can link the packages between them. Um, that's going to uh, reduce the complexity on publishing a new package on npm, for example, to use to use it. If you have a new package here, you just basically build that package, and automatically is going to be ready to use in the package that you are consuming that one. So that's the biggest advantage, in my opinion. There are some disadvantage if you, for example, try to do multi sites. That means multiple sites in one repository uh, because if they are sharing the same packages or the same libraries, basically you can have some regressions issue, right? If you don't test correctly on each website. For this, uh, to avoid this problem, we are going to implement later WebDriver.io to write some end-to-end -end, uh, tests. And basically that will help us to reduce this problem. But honestly, I've been using uh, monorepo uh, the last five or six months and it's having uh, very good results and the velocity and productivity uh, is very high. So let's start. Uh, I'm going to show you where I'm going to host the code for this course. It's going to be on contentpi slash site builder. Uh, this is the repository. And for each video, uh, you will see a pull request. The code for this video is on the V1 or video one uh, pull request. And basically uh, you can see it here. I'm not going to copy and paste the code uh, like to show you that because it doesn't make sense. I'm just going through some of the files and explain like uh, superficially like what's going on with them and writing some code at the end. Okay, so let's start. Um, so I already have some files here that are like the default the uh, files that we need to have in our project, like the .bs code uh, folder with extensions. Basically, we're going to use those ex extensions are the recommended extensions that I use. So that file is for that. In the settings, we are going to use Preacher as our uh, default for matter. We are going to format on save. And also we have some um, ESLint configuration there. Uh, the editor config is needed to also format the code and specify that we want the indentation to be two spaces, uh, etc. Um, ESLint ignore basically is to ignore uh, the folders that we don't want to check the the linter on it. Um, ESLint dot YAML. Uh, basically is going to be our configuration for um, or ESLint. We are going to use the Airbnb uh, TypeScript uh, package. So we're going to use that. 
there are some plugins here and there are some rules that I turn off because I don't need them. Some of them I put an explanation or a comment for each one that I don't need. So you can take a look on that later. The git ignore is basically the, the, the general one. I just add at the end next because we're going to uh, uh, use next for this project. The MVMRC, uh, we're going to use uh, node 17. So make sure you have this version. Uh, pre tier ignore, we're going to ignore these folders. Um, pre tier RC, basically, this is our pre tier configuration. I don't like semicolons, so I'm going to turn off them. So that's it. So let's start working on our mono repo. So once we have this code, uh, the first thing we need to do basically is to create a package JSON in the root. And the first thing is we need to specify the name. In this case, it's going to be site builder or the name of the repository. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, of course. This package JSON that is on the root needs to be private. Uh, if you want to publish the package that are inside the packages folder, of course you can do that later or we can do that later, but the main one needs to be private. And then on NPM, I think from NPM seven or eight, I don't remember exactly, they introduced the workspaces. So basically the workspaces is going to tell NPM that we are going to work with some uh, with some projects that are, are going to be handled as a packages. So for this, normally we want to create a packages folder slash, for example, if we want to add the backend, we can do backend or packages slash frontend. So for this, you need to create that folder packages. And then of course, inside backend and then the other folder front end and you can you can add more here of course but instead of adding manually each of them you can do packages slash star so this is going to include any package or any folder that is inside packages so once you have the workspaces now we have our mono repo start working so now what we need to do is creating some files on the backend. Uh, so for this, you need to go to packages backend and we are going to initialize an npm uh, uh, file. You can do npm init dash y. So basically that on the backend is going to do this. So if you see the name that is given to this project is going to be backend directly because this is the name of the folder. But if we want to actually link correctly or packages between them, we need to call it like at site builder, which is the main name slash backend, right? Uh, we don't have a description here. We don't have uh, scripts. So that's pretty much what we need to do there. And now we are going to create a file index.js inside backend. And for this, I'm going to export uh, a function, uh, another function that just console something. So this is going to say I'm the backend package, for example. Don't worry, uh, in the next videos, we're going to transform this into TypeScript. So right now, just to show you how this uh, works. So now after this, oops, you need to go to the front end folder and do the same, npm init.y. And you need to change the name as well here. So basically you just copy this and it's to be at site builder slash front in this case. We also don't have a description. The version is very important here, 1.00. Uh, you will see why later, but basically let's suppose that in our backend, uh, sorry, in our front end we want to consume the backend, right? So for this, we need to add dependencies and we need to add or dependencies or dependency web, uh, sorry, site uh, builder slash backend. And which version we are going to use? 1.0.0. If this version does not match 
the version that we have on the backend is not going to work. So you need to be careful on making sure you are using the exact version. So, okay, so once you have that, uh, we can create an index file on the front end. And basically we are going to consume the backend, right? So we can do backend require and then site builder slash backend and just call backend function here. Okay, so now in the front end with node, we can run node index. Oh, okay, so before we do that, of course we need to install the package in our front end, right? So basically you know, you need to do npm install on the front end and see what's going on. So if you see the node modules is being created on the root level and is, is including the site builder and then the two packages, backend and frontend. And if you go to backend and frontend inside, you see that the node modules is not being created inside frontend, is on the top level. So that's how the monorepo works. So now that you have that installed, now you can run the index. Uh, let's see why it's not a function. Oh, it's module.sports, sorry, my bad. Okay. And also, if you notice, right now I made a change without build anything and it's, it's working automatically. So basically, if we make any change here and we run it again, it's going to update that right away. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I don't know, like for this video is going to be everything. I, I hope you like it. And if you like, uh, make sure you you do a like on the video and also you subscribe to this channel. And of course, for, for the next videos, uh, we're going to learn how to move this to, to TypeScript and also how to create uh, more packages, uh, like utils packages, how to create a webpack configuration for all the packages, uh, just one configuration for all of them. So it's gonna be pretty cool, I guess. Uh, so that's it. Thank you so much for your attention and see you in the next video. Bye.